The admin building at Stragview is one of the biggest headaches when it comes to security checks. That probably sounds weird, so let me explain. Every night, someone has to complete a checklist of yard tasks. This would usually be completed by the yard sergeant, or the person under him. But, Sergeant Javier and Officer Zaid are lazy, and usually delegate this list to an unlucky officer. They used to let us do it in pairs, but staff shortages have facilitated that one person is responsible for the list every night, as it stands. The list isn't too difficult, it's mostly just basic security stuff. The first job is always to walk the perimeter and, you know, check the fence line. Not too hard, but I never like doing it after dark and usually try to get it done before the sun goes down when it's my turn. The woods are strange around Stragview and they almost always feel like they're watching you as you go about your work. Anyway, it takes about 30 minutes to walk around the whole compound and it's pretty simple. The second item on the list is to test the panic buttons. This requires you to take a big box of body alarms to different places and trigger them. This lets Control know where the blind spots are in their alarms and allows for extensions and coverage. That usually takes about 30 minutes too, and then you move on to the third and least loved item, security doors. The old timers call it night knocking, and there are three places that you have to go. The first is the education building, or the library. You check the classrooms, you check the library, and you generally knock on closed doors to make sure that no one is in them before checking the locks to make sure that everything is secured. Then you go to medical and you do the same thing in the dental area, the mental health park, and the patient exam rooms. The teachers and the medical staff are usually gone by five, but there are sometimes people who stay and need to be accounted for so they don't get locked in for the night and panic. The last stop is the admin building, and it's by far the worst part of the trip. It isn't because it's particularly large or anything. The admin building is a cube with six offices on each hallway. The warden used to have an office here too, but he works and lives in the tower now, so his office went to one of the assistant wardens. Anyway, the problem is that once you get going, you have to go in a very particular direction, or the building will change on you. First time I did it, I went with Sergeant Forrest, and he said I should always be careful to follow the rules when doing the checks in the admin building. People had gone missing in there. People had gone into that building and come out days or years later, still thinking it's the very same night they went in, and he didn't want anything like that to happen to me. So when you come in, go left, proceed down the hall, and check the three doors. Then take your first right and check all the doors on that hallway. Then repeat until you come back to the door you came in through. If you make four rights and come back to find the door leading out is on the right side of the hall instead of the left, make the check again. If you ever come to that fourth right and find no door out, then turn around and retrace your steps. Once you come back and find the door back in the right position, turn around and do your check again. You got it? I remember expecting him to laugh and yell gotcha, but he just stood there until I told him that I understood. Good. I know it seems weird, but trust me when I say that the alternative is worse. Stragview has been through its fair share of officers who've gone into the admin building and never come out again. I rolled my eyes, not really believing him, but I remembered how the woods around the prison had always made me feel when I put my back to them. I remembered the weird eyes I sometimes saw as I did the fence checks at night, groupings making me think that there was more than one creature looking at me. Then there were the other strange things that happened here, the people who go missing, the unexplained deaths, the other weirdness we deal with, and I thought that a corridor with rules was about the least weird thing here. That was until I got trapped in there. I was blowing through the list on the night in question, trying to get back to my dorm as fast as I could. It was Sunday. It was Sunday, and that meant I was going to have to do fence check, panic buttons, security doors, stun fence, and walk the interior fence, something we called the rabbit run. The rabbit run would take nearly an hour, 
made all the harder since I had to drag the rake behind me to cover my tracks. You had to key all the sensors out there before you could be done, and I'd probably get done around one at the rate I was going. After that, I could go back to my dorm, kick my feet up, and have a nice nap before chow time. I know how that sounds, but I hadn't slept well that day, and one of the perks of night shift is that they don't usually care if they catch you napping, as long as your work is done. I was drowsing through the list, walking on autopilot, when I came to the admin building and let myself in through the front entrance. I stood at the crossroads for a moment, my brain trying to remember what I was supposed to do, and when it fixed on the phrase, take your first right, I turned right and started checking doors. The security lights were the only light I had to guide me, and as I went, I felt my eyes trying to close on me. I turned left and headed around the bin, checking doors and trying not to bump into anything. I would already decided that I would stop by the canteen for a cup of coffee before doing the rabbit run. When I turned the corner and stopped, there was no outdoor in the middle of the corridor. I shook my head, trying to clear my thoughts, and remembered what Forrest had said about this. Did I keep going? What was the... Then it came to me. I had to turn around and go back the way I had come. I would go back and take the four turns, and the door would be back. I yawned as I retraced my steps, thinking I might have to splurge on one of those espresso drinks I usually avoided. And when I took the fourth corner and turned a second time, I felt a little chill slip up my spine. Not only was there no exit door, but there were only five office doors now. The office of the chaplain, the frosted glass reading Chaplain Keller, was nothing but an empty wall now. What was more, the remaining five doors looked odd, though I couldn't have told you why. They all had frosted glass windows with various names on them, but now they all seemed a little dull. They felt, to me at least, like the doors in video games that you just know won't open. They felt flat, background, and I already knew that they wouldn't go anywhere if they had opened. They would be locked anyway. I, I knew that already since I'd checked them. So I had no choice but to go on. I tried retracing my steps again, hoping it would fix itself, but as I walked the familiar dark corridors, I started to notice other changes as well. Many of the doors were now missing letters. The safety lights seemed not dimmer, but, but less. The yellow stood out less, the light was less distinct, and I was worried that eventually I'd be left in darkness. My tiredness was gone now, my, my drowsy yawns a thing of the past. My adrenaline was hammering in my veins, and I was taking the corners at a breakneck speed. I came back to find only four doors left, and they now looked more like decals that someone had stuck on the wall. I turned and ran, flying up the corridors I tried to find my way out. I, I wasn't even thinking at this point, operating purely on fear, and my eyes cast fitfully around as I searched for an exit. There were dim lights behind the doors as well, the lights of computer monitors left on at night lights glittering in corners, but the shadows cast by them were far from inviting. I could tell, I could see things behind the glass, things with snaky arms and undulating shadows, things with sharp teeth and bulbous heads, things that I, that I prayed would not notice me as I ran. I counted the corners, one, two, three, four, and when I came around the fourth and Back to my starting point, I wished the doors had stayed depthless. They... they were open now. All six doors had returned, and they were open. What was spilling out was nothing less than living shadows, and as it oozed and smoked across the corridor, I was already backing away. When it touched the safety lights, they went out with a soft little pop sound and left the corridor in deeper darkness than before. They undulated in the deepening night, their paths taking them right for me, and I ran as more doors began to open. I was running flat out, taking corners wildly, and the further I ran, the worse it got. The hallways turned into glass and metal corridors that 
separated the honeycomb of cells and the closed management dorms, and the faces pressed against the glass were far from welcoming. I tried not to look any more than I had to, but their ugly faces pressed against the thick glass with such force that I was afraid they might come spilling from the cracks that were forming in it. These corridors morphed into underground catacombs with heavy cell doors bearing the glittering eyes of long isolated prisoners, switching to the tilted shadows of kitchen alcoves and the musty stacks of the library. No matter where I went, those shadows seemed to dog my heels, and it felt as if I was running in an M.C. Usher painting on more than one occasion. I couldn't tell you how long I ran. At some point, my flashlight fell off my belt, and I didn't dare stop to get it. When I skidded on a wet patch as I ran across the seemingly endless tiled shower room, I discovered later that I'd lost my radio. My feet throbbed and my legs ached, but my body kept forcing me forward like a machine in a lunatic factory. Every corner took me somewhere new, every turn a different landscape, every mile a horrific nightmare theater that I prayed would end in release or death. After days or weeks or even years of flight, I came back to a familiar corridor and saw a single door opening in that hallway. The light inside was warm and inviting, and I barreled towards it like a drowning man sighting land. I bumped into someone as I sprinted out, and we went rolling in the grass like a couple of drunks outside a dive bar. We came to rest on the grass, and I put my hands over my face as the thing I had bumped loomed over me. You okay? I, I didn't see you there. Oh, shit! Get the captain! It's him! People started gathering around me, and as my eyes adjusted to the light, I squinted up and saw people I recognized. They weren't from my shift, but I knew some of them from training or from firearm classes. They were trying to help me up, but my legs were done in. Someone called medical, I guess because the lady in the scrubs with the stretcher beat the captain there by nearly ten minutes. I was in medical, receiving fluids for my apparent dehydration when he arrived looking mystified. Dear God, I thought they were kidding. You gave us quite a scare, especially when we saw the recording of where you'd gone. I'd been missing for three days. I walked into admin Sunday night at 9.48 and stumbled back out again at 1.30 in the afternoon on Wednesday. They'd searched the grounds, thinking I might have gotten hurt while doing checks, but once the security footage had been discovered... There was very little hope that I'd ever be found again. They can fire me if they want, but I don't think they will. Most of the old-timers understand what I went through, even if they've never experienced it themselves. I've gotten a lot of calls from people wishing me well and hoping for my speedy recovery so I can get back to shift. I'll have to go back to work. Of that I'm certain, but I'll never step foot in that corridor again. I got lucky once. I'm not willing to gamble on it a second time. You're still here. Thanks so much for joining us for tonight's spooky tale. If you'd like a little bit more spooky in your life, why not click on one of the videos that appears at the end of our story? Or maybe head on over to one of our playlists where you can get your fill of spooky content. If you like your spooky a little more tactile, I've got a new book that's come out. If you'd like your own copy, there's a link below in the description where you can get your own copy of my spooky book. If you like what you see here on the channel and think you might like to support in a more monetized way, then why not come over to Patreon or become a member on YouTube? Speaking of, let's go ahead and thank our members now. Thanks to Siv Garstead and Unicorn Hollow for being our spooky ghost contributors. Thanks to Janet, Lee Kendall, Psycat, Rhonda J., Sue Casper, and Valinator for being our Spooky Skeleton tier contributors. And thanks to Hi Stacy, Winter, Zeronin, Stephanie Carrington, Tyler Parker, Cinnamon Fox, Sarah SMR42, Grim Reaper, and Tomboy Top Uwu for being our Ghostly Reader tier contributors. And a special thanks to Grim Reaper, who appears to have subscribed not just on YouTube, but also on my Patreon. Thanks, everyone. We just couldn't do the show without you, and your support is always appreciated. 
If you'd like to support the channel, then come on down to Patreon or become a member on YouTube. Spooky Skeleton Tier contributors, that's our $5 tier, get their spooky 12 hours early at 8.30 a.m. as opposed to 8.30 p.m. My time, of course. And while Ghostly Reading is uh, only a tier that's available on Patreon, you get a signed copy of my book anytime I write one on your doorstep in hopefully a timely manner. If you'd like a book, we have many on Amazon. I've got links below if you'd like to follow those. Um, should get you to my page so you can buy any one of my eight books I believe we're up to now. I'm sure they'd look really nice on your shelf and I'll sign them for you if you can find me out in the wild. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Dr. Plague, signing off. Have a wonderful evening.